Let's stay with the story now and go to Lagos. I'm joined by Inbehe Efiong. He's a human rights lawyer. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News this afternoon. What do you understand about what happened in particular yesterday at those NSARS protests? Well, you have to look at the issue that resulted in the current national agitation for a very long time, for decades, Nigerians have endured police brutality. Citizens are regularly killed by the police. The very people with a positional responsibility to protect them. So we have been enduring this cycle of Nigerian police mm -hmm. and a time came when the Nigerian people could no longer tolerate the impunity the lawlessness of the police and they started demanding for reform with particular reference to a unit of the police that is known as the Special Anti-Robbery Squad Hmm. But unfortunately, the government did not pay attention to the demands of the protesters. As that today, the president of Nigeria is here to address the nation. The inspector general of police, who has supervised the killing of protesters, has not been fired. No ranking police officer in the country has been held accountable. So we have seen this disdain that the Nigerian government has demonstrated towards citizens who are protesting. And what has been their reaction? It has been violence, bloodshed, and killings. The government has not shown any restraint. Just yesterday, while citizens were protesting peacefully and lawfully at a place known as Lekki Toll Gate, they were holding the Nigerian flag and singing the Nigerian National Anthem, very peacefully. Into the night, the governor of Lagos State announced that he was imposing a statewide curfew. And even before the curfew took effect, which was supposed to be by 9 p.m. as stated by the governor, soldiers launched a murderous operation. They opened live fire on the protesters as, as reported by credible media organizations in the country, and murdered dozens of unarmed protesters. This has really escalated the situation. I'm sure if you could hear from the background, you'll be hearing rain. I'm sure you can hear that, the rain of gunshots. If you can hear what is happening at the background, the entire Lagos state is on fire. My neighborhood has been experiencing sustained gunshots for us. So the situation is quite tense. People are being killed. Properties are being burnt and all that. And unfortunately, the government is here to take responsibility for what has happened. Mm -hmm. I'm going to quote from a government source. It's from an All Africa report here. The Minister of Information and Culture, Al Haji Lai Mohammed, said the protest has been hijacked by hoodlums and people with ulterior motives to destabilize the country and bring down the Buhari administration. What's your response to that? That is a very responsible statement. It is incendiary comments, provocative comments like the ones you have cited, like the ones you have just referenced, that has escalated the conflict. That is not accurate. On the contrary, what we have seen is a sustained state-sponsored toggery. For example, in Abuja yesterday, you would have seen videos and pictures on social media showing state security officers in government SUVs conveying armed talks to attack protesters. This has also happened in Lagos, where the state has given protection and shielded talks who are being deployed to basically cause violence to discredit the genuine agitation of young people. This is what has resulted in the anger this is what has fueled the anger of young people. 
that the government is so insensitive. Do not forget, do not forget that the Vice President of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, publicly apologized on social media to Nigerians and young people and was pleading for understanding. But just as the Vice President was apologizing, the Chief of Army Staff was threatening fire. The State Minister of Information was threatening fire. So we have this conflicting messaging, this double faced disposition of the Nigerian government to the crisis. That is why the, the situation has escalated up to this point. If the government had acted swiftly, if the government had respected the right of people to protest, the situation would not have degenerated to this point. But when you see a government, a government that was voted on a promise of change, on a promise of fighting corruption, on a promise of changing the fortunes of the Nigerian people, turning the military against unarmed protesters, turning the security forces against innocent citizens. How can you open fire on people who are holding the Nigerian flag? How can you open fire on people who were just singing the national anthem? This is inexcusable. So for the Minister of Information to try to divert attention from what is clearly the malfunction of the administration that is serving is completely condemnable. The Nigerians have suffered for too long. Nigerians have been victims of state-sponsored brutality. Do not forget you again that the Buhari administration, the Buhari regime, has been negotiating with the terror group Boko Haram. This is a government that has given amnesty to terrorists that are killing people, a government that has pampered, a government that has given protection to terrorists and criminals, a government that is dialoguing with armed insurgents. That is the same government, a government that has that whose officials are publicly admitted to paying armed terrorists not to kill people. That is the same government that is now deploying the armed forces against unarmed protesters. So the international community should understand what is going on. This is genocide, what is unfolding in Nigeria. As I speak to you, as I speak to you, almost all parts of Lagos is on lockdown. People are being killed at sight. I'm sure you can hear the gunshots from the background. So this is not some, some exaggeration. We are living in the reality of a massacre. We are really living in a reality of state-sponsored terror. And unfortunately, it appears the international community has not really appreciated the gravity of the situation. Right, so if the hypothesis is that police, uh, broader law enforcement, and the military do not respect the law and need to be reformed, and when you're protesting or when people in Nigeria are protesting peacefully, uh, we get reports like we saw yesterday, what you're speaking about, uh, people being killed allegedly by the military. How then do you expect to change that sector in, in that framework? How, how will that work? Like I told you, we are dealing with a very deceitful regime. Just some days ago, that was last uh, Tuesday, I led a group of lawyers in Lagos State on a peaceful march to the State Police Command. And I had a discussion with the Commissioner of Police. And they gave us an undertaking that they were going to respect the rights of protesters. They told us, including the President, the Inspector General of Police, and the Minister of Information himself, they have said that people have the right to protest. But what have we seen? The government became impatient. They, they cannot understand why young people are still coming out despite being killed. So if you claim you are reforming the police, do not forget that what gave birth to this current national agitation was violence by the police. If people are protesting against police violence and you are using violence to respond to that protest, it doesn't make sense to talk about reform. So as far as I am concerned, there is no sincerity on the part of the government. In Behe Efiong, who is a human rights lawyer, joining me there from Lagos via Skype, we could hear the gunshots in the background as he was describing what he has seen and experienced and his views on the Nigerian government. We're going to continue following that story and perhaps try and also get uh, views from the Nigerian government as well as more people who are involved in the NSARS protest.